The Lord be with you. A very warm welcome to you today, wherever you are watching this service, on this, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to God glorious praise. Say, how awesome are your deeds. Jesus said to them, Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your Spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with the joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our collect for the day. O God, font of all wisdom, in the humble witness of the Apostle Peter, you have shown the foundation of our faith. Give us the gift of your Spirit, that, recognising in Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, we may be living stones for the building up of your holy Church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
And just before we hear the readings, this prayer. Thank you, Father, for making yourself known to us and showing the way of salvation through faith in your Son. We ask you now to teach and encourage us through your word so that we may be ready to serve you for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus chapters 1 verse 8 to chapter 2 verse 10. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labour. They built supply cities, Python and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labour. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of God. Psalm 124 If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, 
If the Lord had not been on our side when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The second reading comes from the book of Romans 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. <clears throat> Let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes, in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Praise be to God. Let us say together the affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again, and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips and sends out God's people, and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, 
And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered them, the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Who do you say I am? Jesus asks his disciples. This is a big question with far-reaching implications and not only for those who have thrown their lot in with him. It is also a big question with potentially far-reaching implications for anyone who is prepared to give this question some serious thought. Who do you say I am? Jesus asks this question to his disciples in Caesarea Philippi, and this was an interesting place for Jesus to do so. Caesarea in northern Israel was well known for its caves and grottos and springs. And archaeological um, excavations have uncovered numerous temples and grottos dedicated to various Greek and Roman gods. In fact, Jesus and his disciples very likely would have walked past a huge temple dedicated to the god Pan and many, many other temples in Caesarea during this discussion. So while walking past so many religious choices, Jesus asks his questions. With all that is on offer, all these different options and choices, who do you say that I am? For Peter, there is no hesitation. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, he exclaims. This is God-given, spirit-filled wisdom. Peter's openness and obedience to Jesus has enabled him to receive this spiritual revelation, and for that, Jesus calls him blessed. Peter's revelation has become a rock the solid foundation on which the Christian church will be built. This rock reminds us of Jesus' story about the man who builds his house on sand and the man who builds his house on rock. As you know from the story, when the storms come as they will, the house built on sand is swept away. But the house that is built on the rock on the spiritual foundation and acknowledgement that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, is the house that remains standing, battered by the storms, yes, but it isn't engulfed and swept away. It isn't obliterated. Who do you say that I am? As we know, humans have an innate desire to follow, dedicate themselves and worship something beyond themselves, be it the divine, another human or even something from the material world, money, possessions. And in our polytheistic society, just like the citizens of Caesarea, we have a smorgasbord of religious options to choose from. In a 2001 census, apparently 70,000 people put Jedi from Star Wars as their religion. 
probably hoping that the force would be with them. Nowadays, there are plenty of religions to choose from, or no religion at all. In a 2016 census, 29.6% of people ticked no religion, nearly double the 16% in 2001. So where does Jesus fit into all this? Who do you say that I am? Jesus was a good man, a great teacher, an enlightened one, a guru, a hippie, a socialist. I'm sure you've all heard similar descriptions of Jesus. And as strange as it may seem to many of us, a question Jesus could also ask isn't, who do you say that I am? But, do you think I even exist? A UK survey of 3,000 adults, admittedly it was a small group, but still 3,000 adults were questioned, and it found that 39% thought Jesus was a mythical figure. A mythical figure somewhat along the lines perhaps of Superman or Thor. And I imagine here the number would be roughly the same, perhaps even higher. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asks. A wise man? A holy teacher? A socialist hippie? Or the Messiah, the Son of God? In response to Peter's own declaration, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus acknowledges Peter's statement as true and calls him blessed. What would your response be if Jesus asked you the same question? In fact, he does, daily, not face to face as with Peter. However, in how we live our lives, how we respond and interact with each other, how we respond to and interact with Jesus. He is asking us this question. Do you believe he is the Messiah, the son of the living God? If so, what implications do you think this may have for your own life, your relationship with others, your relationship with Jesus? your relationship with God. Who is Jesus to you? Stay tuned for next week's instalment as we explore this question further.
We now come to the confession of sin and I invite you to take a few moments to reflect upon your week and the things and situations, conversations, actions that you feel may have moved you further away from God and his light. And in this moment of silence, I invite you to ask the Lord's forgiveness. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Now corporately as a community, as brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. God is able for all time to save those who draw near to him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. We now come to the time of prayer, and I invite you to say with me the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Son of man, before all you nations are humbled, remove the fear that leads to oppression and contempt that diminishes human worth. Raise up leaders of courage and integrity to lead us in these troubled times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of man, you build your church on both the strength and the frailty of your disciples. Pour out the riches of your grace, that with diverse gifts your church may further your kingdom. We pray for those on our parish prayer cycle. Colin and Bernadette Pascoe, Ella Palmer, John Peterson, Troy, Michelle, Amanda and Richard Pollux, June Pope. We pray for Messy Church and the Kids and Kids Hope. The recommencement of Big Brecky, all who look to St Stephen's for spiritual nourishment and persecuted Christians. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of man, you fulfilled the hopes and dreams of all ages. Be with all who long for relief from their suffering and grief, and all who walk this journey with them. May they feel your strength, comfort, peace and love supporting them in their darkest times. In a moment of silence, we will bring before you the people and situations that have been on our hearts and minds this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Son of Man, your glory is revealed in your death and resurrection. We entrust to you the recently departed, Marjorie Olam, Alma Phillips, and those in our year's mind, Susan Hearn, Vi Wallace, Kathleen Abrams. Unlock the gates of paradise that all may enter in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Just before I give you the blessing, a few notices. As you know, this has been a particularly hard few weeks in the parish with the death of Marjorie and also the death of Elma. And I know that many of you are feeling this loss keenly, particularly as you will not be able to come and say goodbye to her in this church and be there to comfort the families. However, I pray that you will find hope and strength and peace at this time through your prayers and through the connection with one another. Keep people in your prayers, keep phoning one another to see how each of you are travelling at this time. Also our parishioners pantry, as you would know, I sent out a, an email which also included the fact that we need some more foodstuffs, non-perishables for the pantry. And thank you to those of you that have already responded. If you're in, uh, struggling to think of what to bring, just think of the staples that you have in your pantry, perhaps some long life milk, some cereal, some jars of coffee or peanut butter or jam. And of course, that staple pasta and pasta sauce. May the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing his will, working in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.
Savior for time to